You're going to love this. I recently sat down with world-renowned psychologist and author Dr. Jordan Peterson. We talked about a number of things, including education versus indoctrination and his mission to fight the far-left woke agenda in schools, maybe your school, as well as why Gen Zs can't cut it in the workforce, not all of you, but some of you, and how we can help them. You got a new study showing new 2023 hires are unprepared for work, they're unprepared for life. Dr. Peterson's take on all of this, especially for parents, is fascinating. Watch. When this study popped up, we thought, you got to weigh in on this. They say that Gen Zers come in, they're sincere, but if they have no necessary instinct on what to do next, find them a lot sitting idly by waiting for instructions on what to do next, does that make sense to you? Something about this generation that would have trouble being self-motivated. Well, I think that if you set up an education system that's designed to do nothing but demoralize young people and to convince them that their ambition is dangerous and, well, even world-threatening for that matter, a manifestation of patriarchal oppression on the social front and then a danger to the survival of the planet on the natural front, then, and you don't do anything to foster that ambition and to channel it into a manner that might be productive and to tell young people why their ambition might be useful, then you're going to get exactly that. So you hit what you aim at if you try hard enough, and the education system has been trying to demoralize people for 60 years. One of the, one of the things that really stuns me, you know, I haven't been able to figure this out yet. I've been trying to talk to Republican governors about this. I cannot understand why conservatives have been daft enough to allow the faculties of, edu of education to retain their hammerlock on teacher certification for the last 60 years. It's insane. You mean right. the criteria to get the certification and what's exactly. in Exactly. You have to be trained in a faculty of education to become a teacher. Why? They're the most woke element of the entire rotten university carcass. And they have the hammerlock on 50% of the state budgets. You know, the conservatives are always complaining about the culture war. It's like, well, you handed all the young people to the faculties of education, right? Their research is terrible. It's low rate. Their students are generally uh, very uh, incompetent, comparatively speaking, on the academic front. You know, it's foolish. It, and this is the outcome. It's not surprising. And it's a way to, to work on the foundation. And when you have an RNC chair or a DNC chair, if you have an agenda, that's what to work on. Don't get Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, candidate elected. Start focusing on, on the direction you want the country in and find out how to... Uh, how to give people an education that will allow them to at the very least think, but not what to think. Well, the left-wingers in the 1960s were far-seeing enough, the more radical types, to envision a decades-long march through the institutions, right? And one of their goals was the capture of educational institutions, and that's happened completely, and that's been absolutely abetted by conservatives who tend to get lost in the details. And... Right. Um, well, then you think now you have young people who are demoralized and directionless. Well, they're never taught anything about how to acquire a direction. You know, we did a study. I used this program I developed called Future Authoring. We did a study where we had three studies, actually, where we had university students sit down essentially for 90 minutes. Right. 90 minutes. This was it. And write out a goal, a series of goals for their life, right? Who could they be in five years? across seven important dimensions of their life and where might they be that would be terrible if they didn't get their act together. We dropped their dropout rate 50% and raised their grade point average 30 by 35%, three separate studies. So that's all you have to do if you want to motivate young people is to teach them a bit of visionary discipline and encourage it. And we do the opposite of that. Plus, we terrify them, trigger warnings. We tell them that everything's dangerous. You talked about accommodation. So someone has uh, ADD, they're told, they're, yeah. uh, dyslexia, or other things. Yeah. In the public school now, there's a lot of accommodations. Give me, give, I'm going to give you more time for your test yeah. or things to that nature. I have trouble tracking across the line. You think accommodations, in many cases, don't show progress, can, can be limiting. Why? Well... The problem with the accommodation hypothesis is something like the advantage is, well, you want to do what you can to help people who might have obstacles that could be overcome to learn. That's not unreasonable. But the problem with the accommodation hypothesis is, well, 
what happens when you have an actual problem to solve? You're not going to be accommodated. You're not going to be accommodated in a workforce that requires genuine competition. Because if you're accommodated in a workforce that requires genuine competition, you're just going to be taken out. There's no time for that. Right. You might say, well, there should always be time. It's like, well, not if there are important things Life's at stake. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's, there's going to, you, that's foolish, right? Because when you're making important decisions, you're always balancing one catastrophe against another. You don't have the option that everything's going to turn out. And so the problem with accommodation, well, first of all, it's going to be gamed, and it's being gamed like mad. And second, it gives the person who's being accommodated to the wrong picture of the world to which they're going to adapt. You think about this with parenthood. It's how should you treat your kids? Well, as a mother and father, you should be a proxy for the world, maybe a slightly more merciful proxy. But basically, the message you send your kids about their behavior is the same message that the world is going to send them, it should be, because otherwise you're not preparing them for the world. You know, so maybe your kid's annoying as hell to you and your wife, and you don't do anything about it because you think, well, we're all mercy. It's like, that's just fine until your kid has to make a friend or, you know, deal with an adult that's not you, in which case they're going to get slaughtered. There's nothing merciful about that. And if you accommodate people beyond what the environment itself would allow, you, right. get, you misinform them about the, the world they're going to inhabit. And plus, it can be gamed, and it's being gamed constantly. Online school, you and your daughter yeah. working together. Yeah. What do we know and how do we get it? Well, we've got about 30 courses recorded so far in a studio in Miami. Um, they look very good. They're very professionally produced. We are trying to find the best lecturers in the world. So if you think you're a good lecturer and you want to participate, give that some thought. That's Peterson Academy. We hope we'll be ready to roll in November. We want to make sure that we have the best lectures that we can possibly provide on the most germane topics, and then we're going to ally that with a very stringent testing and accrediting system so that if you are a graduate of this particular institution, the people who hire you will know that you learned what you were aiming at learning and that you did the proper work. And that's extraordinarily important because employers need to know that. They, Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson, I know you had a few hurdles to clear to get here. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I know our audience does. Best success uh, coming your direction. And, well, if you want to go see you in person, just go to jordanbpeterson.com. Jordan Dr. Yeah. Peterson, thanks so much. Hey, you bet. Great to see you, sir. Thanks for the invitation. All right. Pretty cool, right? Don't miss the second part of my interview with Dr. Jordan Peterson. Next week on One Nation, we discuss the key to happiness. If you have a goal and you see yourself taking steps towards it, that is what produces positive emotion and positive motivation, that enthusiastic desire to get up and go. And it also stops anxiety. All right. Uh, you are going to love this interview. Hey, quick note. Be sure to order my soon-to-be release book, Teddy and Booker T. You'll absolutely love it. It talks about where we were with race with these two men to move our, did to move our country forward. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.